Uh, welcome back, uh, everybody, to the River 2016 Project B. Okay, so um, I believe in the last video, I think we did things like we created this nice fancy um, upper story wall. Okay, that had some uh, weatherboard on it. <coughs> We aligned it so that was going to sit nicely on top of the uh, the load bearing walls below it, etc. So nice sort of job there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is, is um, we're going to put a um, I'm going to put a roof on the the upper level in this in this video, and then we will um, the next video we'll look at. Um, some walls down here, some roofs down here, some different styles. Okay, so what we're going to do in here is we're just going to put we're going to put a hip and valley roof in here, but at the same time, um, you know, we're going to chuck a gable in there somewhere um, to basically show you how gables are done. Okay, so from um, previous lessons, remember. We need to um, pitch the roof, obviously at the top of, you know, basically from ceiling level. So I've gone to ceiling level here. Uh, let's double check that in our elevations. It's this level here. Okay, so the roof is going to sit over this part here. Okay, so back to first floor ceiling. There we go. So now we're going to go back to our architecture tab. And we've got the roof, so we've got three options for the roof. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to do the roof by footprint. So I could either choose that button, or if I escape out of that, the default for the icon is roof by footprint, because that's what we use. Okay, so in our properties, we're just going to change that down to um, the generic 125 at this stage. Okay. And we're going to set an overhang of, uh, oh, let's just say 450 millimeters, so about one and a half feet. Okay. Now remember that with this particular um, roof style, by default we are picking the walls, and that's what we want to do. We want to pick the walls and um, let Revit create the eaves for us. Okay. So I'm just going to go walls there, hover over the outside line, you'll see that light blue line or the cyan line be created, so then just go left click, okay, to drop that line down, left click again, 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 and again, a bit of repetition, around the corners, Revit will automatically fill it and trim those lines for us, so some of the guesswork is taken out, okay, hit escape it hit escape a couple of times and there we go okay so there's the roof line if we have a go to our properties you'll see here the slope or the pitch is currently set at 30 degrees um, that's still a bit too dramatic for my liking um, so we're just going to we can highlight this one here we can just tell that this is going to be 22.5 degrees so a quarter pitch okay so all of these now if I click on them there we go 22.5 22.5 etc etc so now if I was to click finish there that would create a nice hip and valley roof all the way around but what I want to do is for the street side which is on the left hand side here on this part here I want to create a gable here okay so I wonder I want to create a different architectural style or feature here so this so, and this is where Revit is not very <coughs> intuitive in the first instance. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. Okay, so by logic, okay, so we've just told Revit, okay, to change the angle of this, which was 30 degrees, down to 22.5. Now, based on that sort of theory and that logic, if we were to tell Revit, say, we wanted that angle at 90 degrees, you would think that theoretically that line would shoot straight up. Okay. But if I type in 90, 
Revit's not going to let us do it. Okay, it's a non-valid number. Okay, so how do we get the gables done? What we do is we click on the line. Okay, and then you watch what happens in the options bar here. So we go click on that line, and there we go. So we've got some information now in our options bar as to what's happening. Okay, same information is available, or a similar amount of information is available in the properties. But the key element here is this one here, where it says defines slope. Okay, so at the moment we're telling it to define a slope, and that slope is 22.5 degrees, or whatever number we, we determine. If I want to shoot a gable up, I have to uncheck that. Okay, now Revit will punch that wall up, or that roof piece of roof up, 90 degrees. Okay, so let's test that theory. So I'm only just going to do the one gable. Okay, I'm just going to go finish edit mode. And there it is. Okay, there's our gable there. Hip, sorry, valley, valley, nice hips. Okay, remember the roof is complete, but our view range is we've got a cut plane, so it's chopping off the top of the roof. We're going to 3D. There it is. Okay, so there's our nice little gable in there. There's our hips, our valleys. Okay, I think it's pretty appropriate when we're at the stage. It's probably a good idea to go and finish off, put some fascias and gutters on. Okay, so uh, roof tool, click the down arrow, we can put a roof fascia on. Okay, edit type. Uh, I'll choose a 184. Fairly generous uh, fascia, I reckon. Okay, so usual story with fascias. Okay, click on my thin lines tool up here in the shortcuts. So it's a little bit easier to see. And if I just go left click, there's my fascia. I'm going to work around clockwise and I'll finish at the gable. So around there, 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 there. There, there. Uh, beauty of gables is that yes, you can put fascias on, and Revit will automatically sort of fill it and trim everything <coughs> around the side. Okay, so that looks pretty nice. Last thing we need to do now is we'll put our roof gutter on. Okay, so again, this is, where th this is where thin lines comes in handy because I need to make sure that I pick that outside edge there. There's my gutter. Okay, again, I'm just working clockwise. Using my middle mouse button the wheel a lot. Holding the shift key down while holding the middle mouse step button down to orbit around. There we go. Now, watch what happens if I try to... Well, I can't even do it. So, there we go there. And there we go there. I can't... Revit will not let me put a, fa um, a gutter on a, fa on a gable lead, which makes perfect sense. That's it's not the normal way of doing things. Now, in Australia, you, I have seen... Um, there are some house designs, especially with walls um, where we have gutters on boundaries where we will run, builders will run and designers will run a gutter say over part of a, a gable edge and then go flat again so um, that's, a, that's a completely different story with Revit on try how to figure that out because it's, um, it's not something that Revit wants to do willingly okay right so we're going to finish that lesson right there in the next lesson okay we're going to go to uh, our ceiling level, which is our ground floor ceiling level. Okay, then I'm going to show you how to put skillion roofs on. So I'm going to put a little skillion on here. Uh, we'll put a skillion here, and we might put something kooky around here. We might try something a little bit different to see what Revit, what sort of shapes and designs Revit will let us achieve um, using the the roof by footprint tool. Okay, so back to my ground. Whoops, back to my ground floor plan. I'm going to see you later.